Whoo, hot dang. Just out for a rip and I've come across this lovely little grove of some of my favorite trees of all time. Some of the coolest ones ever. The yellow cedar, also known as Alaska weeping cedar or Calotropus nucatensis. These magnificent beauties here are in the Cupressii family, which include its local cousins, the Western red cedar or Theoplicata. And without knowing any better, you might easily mistake the two. But yellow cedar bark is gray and shaggier than that of the red cedar. And it tends to peel off in big clumpy scales rather than the long reddish fibrous strips of red cedar bark. Their leaves are flattened against the branch and scale like just like a red cedar though they are notably four-sided and a bit spikier so if you run your finger backwards up the branch it'll be pretty rough with all those little scales they also have circular cones versus the upward turned kind of woody roses that red cedars have they form really amazing candelabra crowns when they age creating all sorts of critical habitat for all sorts of biodiversity from specific species of lichen that caribou feed on to nesting sites for birds and just like all trees in the compressii family they have really high levels of thuyoplycin and other volatile oils in their wood and needles, which not only provides that fresh, iconic, aromatic scent of these trees, but it makes them resistant to rot and fungi. They tend to live in higher elevation alpine areas with short growing seasons, and they're also one of the slowest growing conifer trees in the world. So big old ones like this one here can live for over 2,000 years and will have really tightly packed rings, which makes for really beautiful wood grain. This factor, combined with that rot resistance factor, makes them a really sought after wood for building all sorts of things, and unfortunately, Many big old trees like this one here have already been logged or are currently being targeted as logging operations in Cascadia move to higher elevation environments. To add to that trouble, these trees are also some of the first ones in the bioregion we're beginning to see have a really difficult time adapting to the impacts of anthropogenic or man-made climate change, and they're starting to die out in large numbers from southern BC all the way up through Alaska. See, these trees have a really shallow root system very close to the surface of the soil, and they've evolved to thrive in areas where there's a deep snowpack in the wintertime that insulates the soils and their roots from the cold air. However, snowpacks are trending to be shallower across the bioregion and weather patterns are shifting to create more prolonged cold snaps before the snowpack is deep enough to adequately insulate the soil. And as a result, their root tips freeze, killing them and any new growth potential, which restricts the tree's ability to draw up water and nutrients and eventually starves them. So as slow growing, long lived staples of these ecosystems, that means that their ability to adapt and migrate north to colder, more suitable regions isn't adequate for the rate of change that we're currently experiencing. So as stunning and as absolutely incredible as these trees are, combined with the threats of over-harvesting from industrial clear-cut logging and that of anthropogenic climate change, the future isn't looking so bright for these beauties unless we change our ways. And losing these trees would be a damn shame not only for those of us who happen to be ripping by, but all the other life that depends on them, these ecosystems as a whole, and the future generations that will follow. What a beauty.